Hello there, David Clark here from DUC Training, and I'm just going to do a very quick tutorial on setting the default settings for a project inside of DaVinci Resolve. Earlier this year, I made a series of videos on how to get started in DaVinci Resolve. See here, I uploaded in February of 2023. Well, we're now in September and something has changed, so I thought I'd quickly just point out a slight difference, and that's to do with setting the default settings for a project. So here I am in Resolve, I'm going to make up a new project, and you call it something, and you're into Resolve itself, but you don't know what the settings are, because it gets set automatically by Resolve. You go down to the little cog, and up it pops with the settings here, and it defaults to 24 frames a second, which is a frame rate for film, because Resolve was originally something designed to grade films. You probably don't want that, you probably want it to match your footage, which is 25 frames or 50 frames if you're in the UK or it might even be interlaced. If you take a clip which doesn't match the frame rate of the timeline, so I'm taking this clip here, which is a 25 frames a second clip, and I'm putting it into the media pool, and it immediately says, do you want to change the project frame rate to match the clip? Which you very probably do. But you can set the defaults in the first place, so it always comes up as 25 frames a second, or 50, or whatever your defaults are. And this is the bit that's changed. There used to be a preset heading at the top of this, which isn't there anymore. Now what you do is you come over to these little dots over here and you can set some settings here. So you can see I've got a default preset and I've got a preset that I've already created. And then there's a way of saving your own presets. So what you do is you set the stuff up, click on this, and then you either save the current settings as a default, which means every single project will have those settings from now on, or you can save your own preset and give it a name. And then say if I wanted to load up from here my Doctor Who colour preset, I would click on that and it would load those settings up. If I want to load up the default preset, I click on that and it would load the default. Or if you just want to set the same thing for every single project, you just go save settings as default. So what I do, because I'm in the land of PAL, is I always set my timelines to 25 frames a second. So that's the first thing, I would change that from 24 to 25. Video monitoring. I'm coming out through a black magic gizmo and it defaults to doing what we call PSF, progressive segmented frame. What that is, is rather than the proper progressive signal, it does a sort of fake progressive signal because some TVs can't cope with a proper 25p signal. But I like to have a proper 25p signal because my screen can, so I select that. And this is where obviously you can do things like setting 50i. If your television only does interlace, you could do that or, or whatever. If you're in a 4K project, but you've only got an HD TV, you could actually set the output to be HD on the TV, but 4K in the project. So I tend to check that. Down here, when you're talking about proxy resolutions and media format, I don't tend to use proxies myself, or optimize media, but I do render stuff. So the render is set to uncompressed 10 bit. Uncompressed video takes up a lot of space, especially if it's HD, or even worse if it's 4K. So I would come and change it to something else. There aren't that many options on a PC. If you're on a Mac, you have ProRes, which is what I'd go for. So you're either going to choose some of these Avid formats or Cineform. I tend to use the Cineform ones because they actually do a decent amount of compression so they don't take up much space. Or I might go for this DNX HRLB, which is a low bitrate one. Basically, this is whenever you're on the timeline and it cache kicks in and it renders something, what format is it going to make it up into? Now, when you come to export, it doesn't necessarily use those renders on export. There is a tick box for it, but generally it just remakes everything again. So I have something so I can render it, see what it looks like moving, but then I'll do it again when I come to actually render the final movie. So if you're not familiar with Avid, DNX HR is an Avid format, but if you're not familiar with Avid, these are all different Avid codecs, and they go from the lowest one there to the highest one there. And as you go up, they'll take more and more space. So I would either use that one or I go for Cineform. Where your cache files are should be set from your preferences. Mine are going on the E drive, but I would make sure that again, the cache files are set to be somewhere else. That should be set up in the preferences here under media storage. So that's where it'll take it from. But if you want to change it, you can change it per project. So like you could put your render files next to your clips if you wanted to. Just keep it off the C drive, otherwise you fill up your C drive and that'll be annoying. You've got defaults here for your retiming processes. All this stuff can be changed afterwards. This is just what you prefer to go for. And I leave those as the defaults. And on the image scaling, I go up to the resize filter. And instead of choosing sharper, which is the default, I'll put it onto custom and choose 
Lanxos. Now, these are lots and lots of different ways of scaling things, and they produce different results. And you'll be looking at that and thinking, yeah, I, I have no idea what the difference is. To be honest, I couldn't exactly define what the differences are. They just produce different results. You can try it out on a per clip level when you're in the inspector. I like to set the default to Lanxos because that, to me, in all the programs I've used, gives me my favorite look of scaling, and then I'll change it later if I don't like it. Down here, you've got the deinterlaced quality. Now, I'm on the studio version, so if I had to deinterlace something, I would set the DaVinci Neural Engine. Most of the time, I'm not deinterlacing, so I'll just leave it on normal. The downside of setting the Neural Engine as the default is that if you do have to deinterlace something, it takes effort. And when I've been on a computer that's got a low powered graphics card, obviously DaVinci does everything on the graphics card. If I set that on my low power graphics card, it makes the whole thing fall over and die. So I tend to leave that on normal. And then I like to change the input scaling here. So this is what happens if you stick a clip on the timeline that it doesn't actually fit. So maybe you're putting a standard definition clip onto an HD timeline. So to explain this, I'll just put a couple of clips on the timeline. I've got this one, which is an HD clip. It's actually, if you look at it, let's pop into the metadata. This clip is actually 1920 by 4040. So it's square, but it's HD width, but higher than HD. And this one here is a standard definition DV clip. Now looking at both of those with the defaults that Resolve puts in, they both fit and they shove black bars on them. If I don't like what Resolve does, I can come up to the inspector, hop down to retiming and scaling, and choose this thing, which is either crop, fit, fill, or stretch. So crop will just make it the original size and leave it there. Fit shoves it in so the whole thing fits, which in this case is a 4x3 clip means black bars. Fill means make it fill the whole thing out and chop off what's needed. And then stretch means fit absolutely everything on screen, which is why I've suddenly become fatter. Now you can change that on a clip by clip basis, but in the project settings, things under image scaling, you have the default. Scale full frame with crop is the same as fill. So if I choose that, it makes it fill it up and chop the edges off. Stretch it, squash everything out and make sure everything fits, but make everybody fat and center crop with no resizing means keep it the original size and then you decide what to do with it later. Now, I personally prefer to do that. In the case of the HD clip, as it was wide enough, it's chopped off the top and the bottom and I can go into the position here and I can reposition it up and down depending on what's needed, sort of effectively panning and scanning it. For the DV clip, it fits in the middle and if I want to get that to fit the screen, I've got to come in here and zoom it. And again, that's my preferred option is center crops. So I always set that. The timeline settings I'd generally leave on their own. And then most of the rest of this stuff I would leave as is. I don't tend to do much analog capturing with Resolve, but if I was, I'd come up to here and set what I'm going to capture, which is very probably PAL. If I was doing any analog capture, it would be off of Hi8 or S-Video. It would not be any variation of HD. So I might set that. And then the capture format I would set down here probably as QuickTime and one of these settings. Now, if I'm capturing PAL, you can't use any of these DNX ones because all of these DNX ones are HD. So I'd have to go for an uncompressed. If you're doing standard definition, there's nothing other than uncompressed that you can actually choose here. And the subtitles and subscription, maybe I'd set that to default to English because I am and everything I do is in English. But mainly the main things I do is just set the frame rate, set the size and set these things on scaling. And then I will come over here and I will either say set the current settings as the default preset. And now every time I open a project, it will match all of that stuff. Or I would say save it as a preset. And now if I was to make a new project, I can always come up here and load that preset and all my settings will be there. You might also notice if I go to that particular preset, I can export it as well. I mean, I would say I could delete it and set it to blah, 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 but I can export it. So if I do that and then export it somewhere, now I can go to another computer, click on this and then import it 
No, it doesn't like it because there's already one with that name in there, but it would be a way of once I've actually made up some settings, I can take those settings and bung them on every computer that I feel like. And I've mentioned quite a bit of that before during my tutorial, but what has changed is how you change the presets. And the presets are click on these little dots as opposed to a setting that's over here. And I have to admit, when that first happened, I was scratching my head as to where that is, because it didn't make sense that it had disappeared. No, it didn't. It just went up to those three dots. Anyway, hope you found that video useful. If you want to know more about Resolve and the other programs I use like EDIUS, please visit my website, www.dvctraining.co.uk. I'll be doing a few more Resolve videos over the next couple of weeks. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.